You go to the Quran as I have gone. The answer is clear. That yes, Nabi Isa alayhi salam will return and there will be his ummah with him. And they will not be our ummah. There will be two ummahs in the end of history. Allah has said in the Quran twice, not once. وَيُعَلِّمُهُ الْكِتَابِ And Allah will teach him the kitab. And the kitab here is the Quran. And Allah will give him hikmah. وَالتَّوْرَاتَ وَالْإِنْجِيلَ And Allah will teach him the Torah and the gospel. And the explanation of this verse of the Quran is that when he returns, he's coming both to the Ummah of Muhammad Islam, as well as to his Ummah. And he's also came coming to all of mankind. He will confirm therefore that the Quran is the word of the one God. And once he confirms that the Quran is the word of the one God, the implication is that absolute truth is located in the Quran. And therefore that Muhammad is a prophet. As soon as Nabi Isa returns, so everything that Allah has said in the Quran concerning him, every Christian will have to accept it. But would they have to then give up? Nabi Isa is their Nabi. Will they then have to join this Ummah? When he returns, he will be the supreme guide for both the Ummahs. He will be the supreme legal authority for both the Ummahs. When he returns, every Christian will have to accept everything that he says. And everything in the Quran will be recognized as absolute Truth. I went to the Orthodox Christian world and I told them what is in the Quran. And they said, we never heard this before. 600 years of your Ottoman rule over them and the Ottomans never took the Quran to them. So they hated Islam. And when I took what is in the Quran to them, there are Orthodox Christians today calling me who are writing to me and declaring, we accept the Quran as the word of God. But we choose to remain followers of Jesus. Nabi Isa Isa will come back to his Ummah. And that Ummah will remain according to the Quran until the end of time. He will lead his Ummah. And we will have Imam al Mahdi leading this Ummah. And between the two Ummahs there is love and affection and fraternity. That is why at this time we are trying to build friendship and fraternity between those Christians who turn to us for friendship and those Muslims who are willing to reciprocate. I'm only praying that my brothers and my sons and daughters in the Balkans who have suffered a lot in the past because they made a mistake in Serbia, in Montenegro, in Macedonia. They made a mistake of supporting the Ottoman Empire against the Orthodox Christians and they're paying the price for that because the Ottoman Empire was an oppressor. Tomorrow perhaps the Orthodox Christians in that part of the world will show a profile of friendship and of love for the Muslims and that might heal some of the wounds. I'm working for that.